Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, I'm going to introduce the coolest SageMaker feature in a long time. So yes, I am actually excited about this. And of course, I mean serverless inference. So when SageMaker was launched in late 2017, I believe the first customer question that I got a couple of hours later is, can we deploy SageMaker models to Lambda and to a serverless endpoint? And for years, you know, I've had to say no. And as of a few days ago, I can actually say, yes, you can now deploy SageMaker models to a serverless endpoint. And this is exactly what we're going to look at today. And as you can guess, I'm going to demonstrate this using a hugging face model. So what we're going to do here is we're going to fine tune a distilled BERT model on the IMDB movie review data set to train a binary classification model. And then we're going to deploy it on a serverless endpoint. And we're going to run some benchmarks and see how fast this thing is and see how we can configure concurrency as well. OK, so once again, I'm really, really excited about this. I've been waiting for a long time about this one. And I know a lot of you have been waiting too. So without further ado, let's jump to the notebook. Here's my notebook. And of course, I will include the link in the video description. So as you can imagine, uh, we start with uh, some dependencies, uh, PyTorch, Transformers, SageMaker SDK, the, the usual stuff. Import the SageMaker SDK. Uh, make sure you have the latest one, which is uh, 270 at the time of recording. And then we're going to download our data set, pre-process it a bit, upload it to S3 and train, okay? So downloading the data set is just as simple as uh, calling load data set in the data sets library. It's already uh, split for training and test, which is fine. We have 20,000 samples in each uh, data set here. And again, these are movie reviews, uh, which are labeled with a zero or one according to sentiment, uh, negative or positive, okay? Next. Uh, I download the tokenizer from the uh, pre-trained version of Distilled BERT and I apply a tokenization function to the training set and the test set in order to train my model on uh, tokens and of course not on text itself, okay? And we've seen this quite a few times. If you're not familiar with uh, transformers and this feels a little bit complicated, uh, I'll also include a link to the Hugging Face course on Transformers, which is completely free. So that's a really good resource if you're just starting with Transformers, okay? But here we just converted natural language to uh, numerical tokens, right? Uh, then we need to rename uh, the label column because that's what the, uh, the model actually expects. And that's it for data processing, okay? So the next step is to upload the tokenized training set and test sets to S3, okay? And here I can uh, use uh, the data sets uh, API again, using save to disk with the S3 file system as a, as a target, right? So that's pretty handy. You don't need to go and, uh, and use AWS APIs. You can use the data sets API you already know. Okay. So now my two data sets are hosted in S3 and I'm using the uh, US West 2 region. Uh, serverless inference is uh, still in preview, although it's an open preview and uh, it's restricted to uh, a few regions. Okay, so check out the, uh, um, the service page, which again, I will include in the video description and make sure you use one of the supported um, regions for storage and, uh, and deployment. Okay, but US West 2 is good to go. Okay, so we have data in S3. The next step is, of course, to prepare the hugging face estimator that we use for training. So I'll just fine tune for one epoch uh, with uh, this batch size and this model name. I'm defining the versions for transformers and PyTorch and Python. And at the time of recording, these are the latest versions available. Okay. 
And next, I define my estimator, which again, we've seen quite a few times, unless <laughs> this is the first time you watch uh, Hugging Face on SageMaker video. So uh, pretty simple. We provide the name of the training script, uh, which uh, we'll take a look at in a second, uh, hyperparameters, those uh, software versions, and the instance type that we like to train on. So here I'm using a P3 GPU instance, only one of them, um, uh, that's enough for one epoch. And to uh, optimize cost, I'm also setting up managed spot training. So SageMaker will try to grab uh, a spot instance of that instance type. Uh, and setting a, a max uh, waiting time of an, uh, one hour, although you know you never wait really, um, and uh, and a max runtime of one hour as well. Okay, but this will only run for a few minutes. Okay, so nothing special here. This is the uh, hugging face estimator as you would use it for any training job. Okay. I won't spend too much time on the training script. You can take a look at it in the, uh, again, um, in, the, in the repo. Uh, I haven't changed anything here. So uh, bottom line, you can bring your uh, Hugging Face script as is. It doesn't need any modification to be deployed on a serverless endpoint, okay? So we grab hyperparameters and dataset locations. Um, we load the datasets from their S3 locations set up training arguments, the trainer based on the model and the tokenizer that we uh, that we defined, right? And then we just go and train and run evaluation, save results to a text file, save the model to a well-known location. So again, um, this is uh, um, this is uh, vanilla uh, hugging face on SageMaker, no, no change at all, okay? And feel free to take a look and if you have questions, you can always ask questions in the comments, okay? Right, so we have the estimator and we call fit to actually launch the training job, okay? And we see all the usual stuff in the log, right? So we see the, 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 the pre-trained model being downloaded and then we see the uh, tokenizer being downloaded and then the training job starts. And of course, we'll see the evaluation and let's get all the way to the end, right? where we should see the model being saved and how long this lasted. Okay, yes, so we see the tokenizer, the model being saved. And so the training job lasted for just a thousand and one seconds. Uh, that's about, yeah, 15, 16 minutes. But we're only billed for um, 300 seconds, so that's five minutes because thanks to managed spot training, we got a sweet discount of 70%, right? And there was no waiting time at all for uh, for that spot instance, okay? So if you're not familiar, just go and, and, and read about managed spot training on SageMaker, uh, which is just uh, an option, again, you need to set in the estimator and you can save 70%. So that's pretty sweet. It's worth reading about, okay? Right, so now the model is trained uh, and we have the, the model artifact in S3, okay? And the next step is to go and deploy. As mentioned before, serverless inference for SageMaker is still in preview, although it's an open preview, so you don't need to sign up for anything. You can just go and use it in one of the supported regions. It comes with a few restrictions and um, one of them is that um, it's not yet supported in the Python SageMaker SDK. So we have to use Boto3 um, to create the endpoint. But, you know, if you've never seen this before, uh, you know, it's a little more work than call, you know, uh, deploy on the estimator, but you know, it's not a lot of work. So don't worry about it. We're going to cover those steps, okay? So we're going to create uh, the model. We're going to create the endpoint configuration. We're going to create the endpoint itself. And once we're done with that, we can go and predict and run some testing. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, as mentioned, we need to import Boto3. We'll need a SageMaker client to create those resources and we'll need the SageMaker runtime client for prediction. Okay, 
So to uh, make sure I, I have unique names for everything, I'm just adding a timestamp to the model name, the endpoint name, and the endpoint configuration name, right? Makes it uh, simple to run this notebook many different times. And the next step is to create the model. So as I've complained about so many times, um, it's a terrible name uh, calling that API create model, but that's the name and you know we have to live with it. It's it's not really creating everything. You know we train the model early on, so uh, fine. You know we do have the model in S3. So it, if you ask me, it's created already. So what this create model API really does, it, it's gonna um, um, you know register so to speak the model in SageMaker so that we can see it here, right? In the console, we see this model resource that is actually pointing to uh, the, the artifact, but it's not creating a model. It's really registering a model. Okay, so just want to make that clear. So uh, we need a few things to uh, create the model. And one thing we need is uh, the name of the container that we'll use to deploy the model for inference, right? So the container that will actually load the model and serve the predictions. So you could you could go and look in the in the deep learning containers and and find the uh, the actual name for the container, or you could use this um, uh, utility function in the SageMaker SDK called Retrieve. And uh, you have to pass the name of the framework. So here, of course, we're using Hugging Face, but this if you use the let's say the TensorFlow container, you you'd say TensorFlow here. Um, the base version of the framework. So in this case, we are actually using PyTorch as a, as a base framework for the Hugging Face model. So we need to pass the right PyTorch version, which region we're running in, which transformer versions and Python version we need. Okay, and of, of course, this should be the same as the ones you used in your estimator. The scope of the image, as you probably know, SageMaker has different images for uh, training and inference. So in this case, we do want the inference image. And then the instance type, which is slightly confusing here because as we're deploying to, uh, to serverless, of course, there is no instance type per se. Uh, but what really matters here is, do we want the CPU container or do we want the GPU container? Okay, so uh, there is no GPU support for serverless inference. So we just want to make sure we pass a CPU instance type so that this API understands, oh yeah, okay, you want the CPU container. But it could be M5 uh, large or C5 something, you know, it would still be the same container, okay? And so we see the name of that image, right? So it's in US West 2, it's the Hugging Face PyTorch inference container, version 1.91 for PyTorch, 4.12.3 for transformers, it's the CPU image and it supports Python 3.8, okay? Again, you could find the list of the, all the images in the, in the deep learning containers configuration, but if you don't wanna be bothered, you can use this to figure it out, okay? So it's a shortcut. All right, so now we can actually create the model uh, passing uh, a name, right? Which uh, we created, information on the container, so the name of the image, the mode, so here we're deploying a single model. Uh, we cannot deploy multi-model serverless endpoints, maybe later. And of course, we need to pass the location of the model artifact in S3, okay, which we got from the estimator above, right? Right here. Okay, so we call the create model API, and as I showed you earlier, we see our model here, okay? Right, next we need to create the endpoint configuration. So the endpoint configuration is basically, okay, starting from this model, what are the uh, infrastructure requirements for it? Okay, so if you if we created a, an instance-backed uh, endpoint, we would say, hey, you know, give me, uh, you know, M5 uh, large instance and blah, blah, blah. Here, it's gonna be a little bit different because of course we don't use instances. So we create the config, uh, we give it a name, we 
um, define production variants. So um, in SageMaker, you can actually deploy multiple models, multiple model variants on the same endpoint, for example, to do A-B testing. Again, this is not supported in the preview, so we can only deploy a single variant. Okay? And that's, of course, the, the model we trained. So we point at the model we created just in the previous cell, and then we pass the server as config, which has the memory size, and we can go from, I believe, one gigabyte to six gigabytes, and the level of concurrency that we expect from one to 40, if I'm uh, not mistaken, okay? So these are the current parameters for the preview. So here I went for the largest memory size and a concurrency of eight, because I'm gonna run eight threads later on. And that's enough. Feel free to increase this if you'd like, okay? So uh, once we've created this endpoint config, of course, we can see it in the SageMaker console as well. And that's gonna be the same information, no surprise. And now we can go and create the endpoint itself. And that's a super simple operation. We name the endpoint and we give it the endpoint config that we just created, okay? And then we wait for the endpoint to be up using a Bodo3 waiter. So if you're not used to using Bodo3 APIs to do this stuff, um, now you know what happens when you actually call deploy on the hugging face or any other estimator. So the deploy API in the Python SageMaker SDK is equivalent to create model, create endpoint configuration and create endpoint, right? So it's a very nice shortcut, but again, we don't have that for the preview. It's certainly coming soon, okay? But the logic is still the same. So we wait for a little bit and it says in service. So if I'm going now to the endpoints, section here we see we have a serverless endpoint and it says in service which is quite promising okay so please note that it still says real-time endpoint it doesn't say serverless endpoint so uh yeah there's no uh there's no no different name here right and we can see all the other stuff good so now the endpoint is up and uh, it's time to invoke it and that's pretty simple too. So let's do that. Let's invoke the endpoint. And this section of the notebook is actually independent from uh, what we've done so far. So you can go and reuse it if you have uh, existing model artifacts or an existing endpoint. Just uh, define those variables here and, and you can reuse them. Okay. So I've got a couple of samples. I have a movie review of my own, which has uh, 16 tokens, I believe. Uh, yeah, sorry, Jar Jar. And I have a longer movie review that I got from, from the web. It's uh, 250 tokens, okay? So first let's go and predict my own review. And it's as simple as invoke endpoint, passing the name, uh, a JSON object with my review and the, the JSON content type. And I'm measuring the uh, invocation time, printing it and printing the prediction as well. Let's run that. Okay, so this movie is quite obviously very negative, uh, as I believe all Phantom Menace reviews should be. That's just me. And we see the invocation time. So that's about 155 milliseconds. Okay, um, that's that's a pretty okay number uh, for, uh, for a CPU instance. So let's see how well that uh, holds if we actually go and... Uh, fire up um, several threads that run uh, a few more predictions. Okay, and that's what we're doing in the next cell. So using the same sample, I'm gonna fire up eight threads, which will all run 100 predictions pretty much in parallel. And remember I set concurrency for uh, the serverless endpoint to eight, okay? So that's uh, uh, a consistent number here. And prediction is just the same. Uh, you know, we fire up the thread, run 100 predictions. I actually record all the prediction times and thread IDs so that we can do some plotting afterwards. And then I just fire up those threads, right? And let them predict. So I've done this. So we see the eight threads. After a few seconds, we see we have 800 measures, which is what we expect. 
100 measures per thread. Okay. Uh, I can go and extract the times. Uh, if you want to plot the individual threads, uh, you can go and, and do that. I didn't try it. Just want to have the aggregated uh, times here. And then I can plot a histogram for all those prediction times. And I went for 100 bins and I see actually, you know, there's not much of a long tail, honestly. Uh, most predictions fall. Yeah, we can see like, you know, 90% of the predictions, if not more, fall into the first bin, right? And so we have very, very little variability. We this is pretty stable. And if you compute the quantiles, you see that, you know, your P90 quantile is under 200 milliseconds and the P95 quantile is under 300. And yeah, the P99 quantile is quite higher because of those outliers. But, you know, if you're looking at P95, it's uh, it looks very good, I have to say. So these are the times for distilled BERT uh, on classification with short, uh, short token sequence. So let me run the same uh, example with uh, the longer tokens and we'll see those times. Okay. Okay. So I've just switched the uh, test sample to the 250 token sample. I ran the same code again. Okay. And we see the same you know, strongly consistent uh, times, um, like literally almost all of the 800 uh, uh, times are in the in the first two buckets. And again, I just have a couple of outliers, um, but this is really, you know, this is really, really tiny. So yeah, <laughs> no long tail at all. And if I look at, again, the quantiles, I see the P90 quantile is under 700 milliseconds. Uh, P95 is quite close actually, and uh, P99 is just a little uh, more than 800, which, which again is is a good number for such a long sequence. So um, yeah, I mean our our initial impression on performance here is you know I think it's pretty good. Um, you can go and run the example with uh, you can try different models, you can try more threads, you can try higher concurrency. Um, yeah, that's uh, I guess the notebook gives you. Uh, um, all the all the code you need to go and try that and uh, we're going to write a couple of blog posts as well so keep an eye on the hugging face uh, blog in the next uh, week or so i will try to give you more details and show you uh, show you a few more things as well uh, deploying any model straight from the hub that kind of stuff um, but i think here you got a, a good notebook to go and experiment right and when you're done as always you should go and clean up everything Right, which you can easily do with those uh, three APIs below: delete endpoint, delete endpoint config, and delete model. Okay. So there's one more question we need to answer, and that's cold start. So cold start is uh, how long does it take for the first prediction when the the endpoint is cold, when the when the model hasn't been loaded, which which is a, a lambda feature, right? The first time you hit a lambda function it actually takes uh, a little while to um, to spin up and process whatever data you're sending to it. So um, the number have, I've seen here is 25 seconds, um, but I want to make it clear. This is uh, with this single example, this is probably uh, tied to model size. So smaller models would probably load faster. Bigger models would probably load longer. But again, what I've seen here is 25 seconds. So the first hit takes 25 seconds, and then you'll see the numbers that uh, that I've shown you, right? But go and run your uh, your own benchmarks. Um, you know this notebook makes it pretty simple, I think. Uh, it's a really cool feature. You know that's my conclusion. I'm really really happy we have this now. It's easy to set up. It'll be easier once we have the Python SDK. Um, it scales pretty nicely, as I can see here. The, the prediction times are consistent with uh, what we would get on uh, CPU instances. So yeah, it's in preview. It's not in all regions and you have to use Boto 3, but it's already quite cool. So um, yeah, sometimes I can be actually very, very happy about launches. <laughs> like
That's not always the case if you've watched the other videos, but this one I really like. So well done and congratulations and looking forward to uh, seeing more. Uh, we'll keep uh, working on this um, at Hugging Face. We have a few blog posts in the works trying to show you different ways to use this. So keep an eye on the, uh, on the Hugging Face blog in the, in the next week or couple of weeks and there should be more. Okay, until then, thank you for watching. I hope you learned a few things. And until next time, keep learning.